This is a celebration. We're going to celebrate the life of my uncle. And we're going to get through this as a family. Amen. 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 We're going to get through this. Get on my toes, they have to be tall like my cousin. <laughs> I ain't talking about you, Francis. You wired it up, Dr. Waddell. You wanted the clothes? No. <laughs> huh? You wanted clothes? Well, y'all won't be able to hardly see me unless. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's up to you. That's why I asked. We can open the back. We're going to go to the clothes. See me a little bit. Amen. 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 Um, let me tell you how we're going to do this. We're going to go through this. Um, we're going to open us up in prayer. We're going to have Tiaka come and sing one song. And then after that, I'm going to allow two people to say words. Um, to speak on, on one of them, be James. And then whoever else wants to do it. And then we're going to go into a sermonic hymn. Tiaka do another song. And then I'll go into the sun. Amen? Amen. Any questions? Okay. This is a celebration. I know it's old. I know it's old. So imagine how hard it is for me to be at this point. Can we open it back up after? Yeah. While well, I'm standing behind here, and this is how. For the most part, I think this is the first time, except my aunt, that any of y'all have seen me like this. And I've been in ministry roughly about 20 years. I think James, James might have seen, James has seen me like this. But for everybody else, this is the first time. And what a time. While we talking to it, that was just a sidebar to the family. Amen. Amen. So let us bow our heads in prayer. And then we're going to start. Gracious and eternal Father, Lord God, we come at this time. At this hour, Lord God, we know that this is the time that we lean on you the most. We call upon your holy name right now, Jesus. Lord God, we just thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to come here for this celebration of life, oh God. As a family, Heavenly Father, united together as one, O oh God. You say it in your word, Heavenly Father, family that stays, prays together, stays together. And, O oh God, we would ask that you would keep us bonded together, O oh God, letting no weapon formed against this family to prosper, Heavenly Father. Letting no animosity, backbiting, or anything come into it, O oh God. Lord God, we thank you for this family. We thank you for covering it, O oh God. We thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. 
And as I prepare, O oh God, to leave this eulogy, O oh God, I would ask that you would be with me. Keep me strong, Heavenly Father. Keep your arms of protection wrapped around me, O oh God. Let your words be my words, Heavenly Father. Remove me, O oh God, and let them see you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So at this time, I'm going to ask Keanu to come up and render us a song. And we're going to go for it.
Amen. Amen. You don't know it by now. God will take care of you. God is the only person that can take care of you in good times and bad times. Just trust him and God will take care of you. At this time, I'm going to allow two people to come up very briefly. The first being uh, James uh, for words to the family. And as a representative of the family, amen? Amen. amen. I never want to attend any other funeral bad as I want to attend this one. You know, when I heard the news of my uncle passing, it really just hit home yesterday when I passed my aunt and I actually saw him in the casket. It's just, you know, as I'm saying again, not speaking to you, this can seem unbelievable, but at the same time, I've been sitting and thinking and just memories of my uncle and what type of person he was. And I've been, you know, interacting with him often since I purchased the rental property. And from how he treats people that he dealt with with his business as an electrician and how he handled himself, you know, I couldn't do nothing but honor the way he just represents himself. It never was a bad day. And if anybody needed him, he'll go out his way to be there. You know, I can think of times where, well, just recently, my truck 18 weather broke down and I had nobody to call. And I called him. And he had no idea what to do. And me neither. And he said out there with me and we figured it out, you know. And we had a conversation. I told him, hey, what am I going to do without you? And he looked at me and said, I don't know. You're going to do something. <laughs> but he was like, shoot, what am I going to do without being able to help you? And I looked like, man, like you get a pleasure over helping me much as I need you right now. <laughs> but that's the type of person he was. And It's just, you know, it was a blessing just for him to take me under the wing, almost like a son, just the whole family. You know, Brandon, BJ, Francis, you know, that's like brothers to me. My you are like know. a second mother to me. And it's always been like that. So we just going to remember, you know, the type of person he was and as far as him going now, he's all treating me how to treat people, no matter what, how I'm feeling. Cause that's how you treat people with just he'll brighten up your day on his baddest day. And that's what I'm gonna take with me in this passing. Amen. 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 Right on close. Come on. After this repair, yeah, I can release something where I can get everybody to sing together. Uh and then uh, we want to go right into the sermon. Amen? Amen. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am Loretta Johnson, a very close, very, very close friend to this family. And everybody that knows me knows I call him Poppy. Especially, and that's what he was to me. The Baroness sister, and those are my brothers, BJ, Brandon, and Frank. I'm going to miss Poppy because he was truly one in a million. It's just, it's just, it's just crazy that we're dealing with this, but God knows what's best. Sister, we're going to get through this. We're going to celebrate his life because that's what he was about. And we're going to get through this. And James, I have to say to you, Honestly, before I called you, I called Pastor. 
because he was just just a person. He was just that go-to person. He had the answers, and if he didn't, he was going to find them. And he's truly going to be missed. We love you, Poppy. It'll never be the same without him. But we will get through this. Thank you. Amen. 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 All right, yeah. So we can all sing together, unite together. And then we'll go into it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm always going to talk about my name. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm truly going to listen. No better day will come. Everybody should know this song by the eye of Jackson. Sometimes it feels cold. You feel all alone. But hold on, better days are coming. It can be rough in this world. I know it ain't easy, but hang on in there. I know better days are coming. Is it good you see bad? You've been happy and sad. But just remember the better days, better days are coming. but that's what we all have to hold on to that better days are coming and we know that if we just hold on to God's unchanging hand that we know those better days are coming amen amen, amen. amen. if you would bow your heads with me for one moment gracious eternal God Lord God we thank you at this time we thank you for the opportunity oh God and right now Holy Spirit we would ask that you would have your way <coughs> Bless us right now, God. Open up our minds and open up our hearts to thy divine word. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Right quick, like I said, this is ooh, never in a million years that I thought, and to be funny, that this is how my uncle would hear me preach for the first time. Amen. 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 This is how any of my family would hear me preach. But God is good. All the time. And through it all, I would just tell my aunt, Brandon, BJ, Francis, hold on to God's unchanging hand. I was told to tell you from my friend at the pawn shop, Mark, that he would be truly missed. You know, I was at work the other day. Somebody said, I need an electrician. And I just got quiet. Because whenever somebody asks me that, everybody said, you know you need one. I know who to call. You know how they say, Mark Bart said, one call, that's all. And all I would do is just call him. He'd holler, what up, nephew? And I just tell him what I need. And he, uh, you know, the craziest thing about it, as busy as he was sometimes, he would, he would always make a way. He'd tell me, give me a few, give me a little bit, and I'll make it happen. And I'm so grateful that he always took care of me. Because, you know, before, you know, before y'all three, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all three, it was me. The last of we were the ones running around, you know, looking at the picture from when we were in Florida. So I said, well, that, that, that thought couldn't get out of my head. And how wonderful of a man. And that's how I forget. Nobody recognized, nobody even think I'm 47 and they've been married 45 years. Mm -hmm. Neither I'm just that young. <laughs> <laughs> and I got gray all up under my chin now. And you ain't, I don't see no gray on that head of yours. So either we doing a reverse, either I'm getting old and you getting younger. I don't know what's going on, but 45 years has been a blessing, amen? Amen. This is something that we've all strived for. I believe, how long have you been married now? 14 years. 14. And I see I'm way behind here now. I'm supposed to be the big cousin. And I'm only at seven. I'm half of where he at. But 14 years, so you, we still got a long way to go to catch 45. Yeah. And we just keep adding that number because we know if, if he would, they would still be going on and on and on. So I can say, yeah, that's another roadmap that my uncle has set for us to strive for. Through it all. And as James said, the words of encouragement, it was never a bad day. I will never remember my, I will never really, I can't even think of a time I ever seen my uncle mad. A nice smile. So keep those thoughts in your heads. Keep that picture. And think about all the people's lives that he touched. No matter where y'all go, no matter what, when you call out his name, you all ready just be prepared to hear something good or hear a story. So when you talk about legacy and you talk about following the footsteps, he leave me all some good steps to follow. Create your own footsteps as men. And as fathers, we just know that my uncle has left a good road now. And for my aunt, don't worry. Every morning when you open your eyes, he's going to be right there. Every day when you walk throughout the kitchen, every day when you just, just look Buy up. Some chicken. Some chicken. <laughs> he's going to be right there. He's in our hearts, and that's something that nobody can ever take away. But I gotta keep my own self on time. I'm gonna get through this, amen? amen. Just, 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 just help me. I'm gonna get through this. Um, in Jeremiah, the first chapter, starting at the fourth verse, it says, "Then the world." Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew Benedict Smith was going to be a good man. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. 
Then said I, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in my mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. You know, this, this is not for him. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is for those, this is for everybody that's out there. And my subject to you would be just hold on. God's got your back. Mm -hmm. Just hold on. No matter what you go through, no matter how hard it gets, just hold on. Sometimes as Christians, we find ourselves in the midst of our God-given tests and the midst of our God-given duties, working on our God-given vision, dead center in our God-given mission. Our minds focus on our God-given purpose and operating in our God-given talents. We find ourselves just holding on to what we're not supposed to. Even though it was God who ordained us, even though it was God who gave us his master plan, even though we've already seen God's mighty hand working in our lives. We still find ourselves sometimes holding on to things we're not supposed to hold on. I don't know about you, but at different points in my life, I found myself holding on to some things that I knew God wanted me to get rid of. Whether it was bad relationships, whether it was jobs that I wasn't supposed to hold on to, but no matter what it was, I still found myself holding on to some things. And it's like anything. If you ever seen a plane that's trying to go higher and higher, sometime in movies they say you have to get rid of some dead weight. I don't know about you, but when you, when you, when you get rid of some of that dead weight in your lives, you have a tendency to feel like the burdens have been lifted off your shoulders. This is the situation Jeremiah found himself in. We all know Jeremiah, the one who was anointed and appointed at a very young age. God had called him for a specific purpose. God had given him a specific, a specific plan. God had already told Jeremiah that you're going to have to deal with some stiff-necked people. You're going to have to deal with some people that won't believe in your vision. You're going to have to deal with some people that's going to tell you you can't be what God has called you to be. You're going to have to deal with some people that's going to talk down on your marriage and talk down on your relationships. You're going to have to deal with some people that are not just like you. I don't know about you, but I, I, I've dealt with some people like that. I've dealt with some of the naysayers that says that you're never going to be anything. I've dealt with some people that says no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be like this cousin. Or you're not going to be like your daddy. Or you're never going to mount up to what your mom was. I, I've dealt with some people like that. But to God be the glory that those people that have spoken those things over my life are not the ones that are the ones that dictate how my life is going to go. That we serve a God that says all things are possible. We serve a God that says I can do all things through God, through Christ that strengthens me. This was what Jeremiah had to deal with. Jeremiah had to deal with some people that, you know, the ones that call you on the phone that don't have nothing but bad things to talk about. The ones that uh, can't tell you anything good, but they can tell you all the negativity that's going on. They can tell you anything. They, they, they're worse than TMZ, family. Anything that's negative that's going on, they can, they can tell you about. But if you tell them, tell me something good to feed my spirit. Right now, you should know who your true friends are. You should know right now about the ones that truly love you, the ones that have been able to pray with you, the ones that have been able to cry with you, the ones that have been able to uplift your spirits. Because if they hadn't been able to do that, then really you need to check and see if they're really your friends at all. This is what Jeremiah was commissioned to do. He was commissioned to 
root out, meaning pluck up to get rid of, to dig out. If we can't dig it out, then he was told to cut it out. And if we couldn't cut it out, then he was told to burn it out. What is this saying to us today? God is telling us that we need to talk about all of this hypocrisy that's going on in our families. Amen? Amen. Because if families are supposed to be a bond, families are supposed to love one another, families are supposed to be there for one another. Just as James said, he called my uncle and he didn't even know, he knew probably that he couldn't help him. Amen? Amen. But just to know that he would be there for him in the midst of what he was going through. That my uncle stood there right with him because he would be like me. I can, if, if I can't sell it to you, I can't fix it. Amen? Amen. I can say anything. But you go to talk about fixing something, I'm, I'm going to be clueless. So just because my uncle was there, that's what you want. We want family. We want friends that are going to be there. And I'm so glad we have the best friend named Jesus that we can call on. In the good times, in the bad times, in the midnight hour, in the daytime, no matter what time of day or night, just call on the name Jesus. All you got to do is just cry out, just say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And Jesus will be there for you that no matter what the situation is, whether it's something small, whether it's something big, that he will show up and he will show up. That when you need a friend to cry out to, Jesus will be there. You need a shoulder to lean on. Jesus will be, one, you know, one of the things that I'm almost done because we get looking at this time that I loved about my aunt. And the whole time that I've talked to her about this, she's been cool, calm as a collect, as a cucumber. B, you think when I talk to you that you were cool, calm and on the phone, but your mom was cool, calm, and collective the whole time. And I know that she had a lot to deal with. And I know that it was on her heart. And I know, but the whole time she was, and the thing about it, sometimes she was encouraging me. That's how strong of a woman that she is. That's how devoted that she is. And if I've learned anything about her during this time, and I want to tell each and every person that if I've learned anything about her, that I've learned that her faith is beyond anything that I could ever believe. That I've trusted and believe that God has anointed her for this time to be able to be there for each and every person in this room. Jeremiah had a task of having to deal with some people that he never thought that he could have dealt with. But throughout this whole thing and this whole situation of having to pull down, pluck down, get rid of, to destroy, Jeremiah knew that God would be there for him. Family, I want to tell you this morning that we have to make sure that we know that God is by our side. That no matter what, that he's going to help us out, that he's going to get us through whatever situation that we're going through. We need God at these times. And I want to tell you, if you don't have a serious relationship with him, get yourself a serious relationship with him. If you don't know what to do, call me, and I'll talk to you. It's easy. Just cry out to him. Father, I stretch my hands to you. Lord, whatever, I submit my life to you. I believe that Jesus bled and died on the cross, that whosoever believes in him, would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. Lord, I know that the only way to the Father is through the Son. And I'm committing myself right now to go through the Son to get to find my place. So I want to tell us this morning, and I'm cutting this off. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. Just hold on. Just know that our uncle is in a place where there's no more pain. There's no more sorrow. There's no more sickness. There's only happiness. He's walking with streets paved with gold. He's sitting up there with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you this morning, family, make sure that at your hour, at your time, at your anointed and appointed place, know that you have reservations in heaven. And those 
first class reservations. And when you get to the gates, you're able to hear those wonderful words, good and faithful servant. Job well done. Come on in. Come on in. Ask yourself right now, can you come on in? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to thank you. We got about three minutes to go through this because we got about three minutes for this viewing. We're going to do this really fast. This last viewing. We're going to do this really fast. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Oh. 